everybody has its own personal way of working and getting things done, right? Well, we all have one thing in common. We all use software and apps to make things happen. So today, we're going to talk about top 7 apps that I use on my Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, an Android device. Now, I do want to point out that I use my Galaxy Tab S7 Plus mainly as a productive machine. That means, well, some nut fixes were in there. there. That means, I use my Galaxy Tabs, Tab S7 mainly as a work-oriented device. I do all my work and personal projects on my Galaxy Tab S7, including this YouTube video. That means that all the apps that I'll be discussing today will be apps oriented to productivity and jump-starting any kind of project. So if you're into gaming and such, this video is not for you. But if you want to get things done and want to see all the apps that I use daily, this is the video to watch. So let's start with number seven, and that goes to Adobe Lightroom. Now, as much as I hate Adobe for having badly optimized softwares and apps, always crashing and running much lower than their competitors, Adobe Lightroom for Android is not one of them. What I love about Adobe Lightroom for Android is that it not only works flawlessly even with raw and heavy duty photos, it also offers everything that you can imagine waiting from a desktop complete version. You can also organize catalogs and keep things clean as simple, just like how you can on your desktop version. Not as complete or complex, but similar. Taking all that into account, I use Adobe Lightroom on my tablet mainly for editing work and personal related projects. Yes, professional projects. My Lightroom is powerful enough to do that. And also works better, as I mentioned, than my desktop PC computer. Thanks to my Galaxy Tabs S7 amazing AMOLED screen, it just makes their screen so much easier and better. I can sit on my sofa with my tablet with an amazing screen and start editing professional photos. And that's what makes Google Lightroom magical. It's powerful, easy, and quick, and you get professional results. Doesn't lag like the one on my computer version. Number six goes to Sketchbook. Now I'm pretty sure you heard about Sketchbook. And there are million types of applications that can do what Sketchbook can do. But what makes Sketchbook special is that it's not only powerful with full layer support and awesome pencils, it's also a free application with no annoying ads getting in the way. I use Sketchbook mainly while I'm sketching. This has to do anything design related, complex design related stuff like illustrations, logos, icons or anything design related. I do not do the design directly on the application but to generate visual examples and concept, concepts before I work on my PC or computer. So it's great for me to do just quick sketches, get some complicated illustrations or logos or ideas that I've in mind and make a complete sketch version that will help me get the sketch version and finalize it in a professional software. So thanks to its features like layers, rulers, pencils, objects, and cool extra features on top of its very user-friendly interface, makes this app just an amazing app to sketch on. And I would totally recommend that you do so as well. It's just great to pre-start any design-related project when you're sketching. Talking about sketching, you'll be needing to present those sketches to your clients somehow, right? Well, number five goes to Google Slides and Microsoft Office. Now, why would I recommend such a simple app as a top app? Well, mainly because Google Slides offer just a simple, quick, and easy way of creating rapid presentations. And, to, and that's a deal breaker for me whenever I'm working in time limited projects. I use Google Sheets to show off all my sketches that I did on my, for example, sketchbook or other ideas that I got from other applications into complete presentation. Simple yet effective presentation for the client to follow. Now, Microsoft PowerPoint is another option, an amazing one. But the thing is, I do not always need all the powerful and amazing stuff a Microsoft PowerPoint can do. 
So what I do is just use Google Slides whenever I need quick, simple and direct presentations. And that's mostly what I need. I do use Microsoft PowerPoint, but a lot less in general. I do need to create presentations quick and simple now. And Google Slides is a perfect way to do so. Number four goes to Pinterest. Yes. Now what a designer needs before jumpstarting any project, inspiration and creativity. The best way for me to do that, to inspire and research was with Pinterest. It's not only very intuitive to read creative ideas with nearly unlimited database, it's also great for creating boards and pin different ideas into organized spaces to separate different projects for specific purposes. So I use Pinterest 90% of the time when I'm doing any type of work-related projects, or even personal ones, or even a YouTube video. So Pinterest is an ideal and necessary tool for me to work professionally and inspire from other projects to make a creative, professional and well-balanced work. If you're a designer or anything related to multimedia, trust me, doing your research and creating boards, organized way of creativity on Pinterest will help you enormously. So overall, the quick way of searching, quick way of grabbing creative stuff and organizing and pinning them into different groups make Pinterest an amazing app to use for creatives. One software that blew our minds is Figma. Now Figma goes on top three on my list mainly because of its incredible power and flexibility that it offers. It's not only designing apps and interfaces, but to design anything vector-based with powerful tools similar as a software like Illustrator. And wait for it all in the cloud, making Figma just an incredibly responsive tool more than Illustrator or any kind of software-based system. Now keep in mind that I use Figma on my tablet on a web-based interface. I'm not sure if they have an application to do complex stuff like I do on Figma. So whenever you have a tablet or an Android anything really with a big screen, you can open web, the Figma app, go to figma.com and get, well, working. You do need a mouse and a keyboard just to make things clear, to work properly. As I said, it's a very professional tool to create complex projects and you will be needing at least a mouse and a keyboard. One thing I totally adore about Figma is that you can not only create professional results on the web, you can also export the result, those results in different types of format, making it an amazing app to complete or finalize your end project. It's not for sketching, but doing it professionally and exporting it however you need it. It's just a handy tool making it great for finalizing up any designs. It also has a plugin and templates to enhance your overall experience. A very nice app indeed. I just wish more apps do what Figma is doing, a web-based application that can be accessible from anywhere, quick, simple and fast, and professional. Now, number two goes to OneNote. Yes, Microsoft OneNote. This tool is extremely underrated and oh my god, it's just an amazing tool to get things done. OneNote is a simple app that can help you create catalogs and pages in an organized fashion to text write and note down anything, even attach advanced stuff like images, videos, tags, voices, etc, etc. I use OneNote nearly daily, not just to note things down like a notebook, but to jumpstart any project in organized fashion, I repeat, organized. I do all my brainstorming, ideas, images, audios, everything, and put it in one place, and that's OneNote. And I just try connecting stuff, doing sketches, and just getting ideas down on paper, which, well, in my Galaxy Tab S7, it's a display. But it just feels like a notebook. You can open, organize, and write down everything you need. It's actually extremely important for me to use OneNote to organize complex 
projects like logos, preparing classes, which is a big one, preparing exercises, and jump-starting or even brainstorming big and complex projects that I need to just write down and do things and get ideas on paper. I just can't stress the fact that I love this application. And if you get used to using OneNote to just write down, organize, and do whatever you need, it will change the way you work. And I highly suggest you use it as well. Oh, by the way, no one is sponsoring this video. If you like, oh, I'm suggesting this app because I'm Spartan, no. I use this app daily, all the apps that I'm mentioning. So keep that in mind. And number one goes to, well, Notion. You've probably heard of Notion or not. And if you have heard it, you either love it or hate it. But you just can't ignore the fact that it changed the way I do my work daily. The best thing about Notion that you can organize your work and space in your unique and creative way. Yes, it can be a complex software or an application, but it helps you create a multiverse with m so much flexibility to organize and boost productivity. But if you have an unorthodox way of working and organizing things, Notion is hands down the best application to do so. I have created a space for my classes, personal work, professional work, and you can even get away with lots of stuff with free version. I use the free version. Can't stress enough how this app has helped me get organized and create my own way of working. Now, you can even export your projects and your boards in a lot of formats like PDF, HTML and more. Like this paper that I just prepared on Notion for my YouTube video. I exported it as a PDF and printed it in my hands. Now the app they have on an Android device at least on my Galaxy Tab S7 is not great to say the least. But they do have a desktop version, well you can open up on any big screen or even a tablet and it works perfectly fine. Just to mention that any productivity software on small screens or a very cramped application will probably not work as you desire. If you're gonna do powerhouse work you probably need a big screen. And Notion is designed for that. One extra feature about Notion that I love is I can put five up to five megas of files on my Notion. As a designer, when my files don't surpass five megas, especially digital work, I don't need anything more. I can literally attach all my work, most of my work, at least social media work, on Notion directly. I don't have to embed any links. So yes, Notion has changed the way I work. And if you are a complex worker and needs your own special interface, Notion can help you out for sure. So if you like this video and want to get sneak peek of my work and the apps that I use, maybe you should consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Well, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel because soon I will be doing videos of my workflow as a teacher, how I prepare classes and explain to my students everything. The workflow that I use to prepare work, deliver work to clients, and prepare classes for my students. And that's a really valuable thing to share. And you should be there when I do so. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. And please comment down below if you have any suggestions. And thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.